Welcome everyone to tonight's tournament, the Call of Duty World War II 44 Search and Destroy for November 28th. We're hopping in here with Sprite Zero Cranberry, very specific name, versus the side of Not Getting Busy. As uh, should be an interesting tournament, to say the least, for tonight. Of course, I want to give a uh, quick apology for uh, those who potentially are listening to my voice. Not the most strong uh, thing that you've ever heard. Uh, it will be a little bit of a struggle tonight, but we're still out here. We're still grinding, casting, and uh, broadcasting tournaments, of course, for you guys. And tonight is no difference. As this series, of course, is the best of three. Much like how the entire tournament will also be playing out. Of course, this one being a best of three series, like I said, with Matt number one being here on London Docks. Matt number two will be Search and Destroy on Gibraltar. And Matt number three will be St. Marie Dumont if it comes down to it. But kind of talking about both of these teams, not super familiar when it comes down to the squad of Sprite Zero, as they just happened to win that round number one, along with a man named Savant going... Uh, 3-0, along with the uh, the hat trick in the round. Playing very solid when it comes down to that bomb site. Nihil, though, getting the first blood, a.k.a. rocking the Jester clan tag. That was obviously a team, I believe, that was formed at UMG Dallas uh, back in Advanced Warfare, to be specific, with guys like Johnny. And uh, who else was on that team? I can't actually remember. But was it Johnny and... Um, there was like one guy who had... Oh, Chance. I think it was Chance and someone else. I can't... I can't remember who else it was, but either way, of course, quite a few known players when it comes down to the not getting busy side. You got uh, Glorios, aka Glory, Profizi, Nihil, and Beezy. Uh, I believe three out of the four players are technically on the roster known as Hype Unit. Yeah, as a standby, will drop here in the latter parts of that round number two. Pretty dominant comeback when it comes to not getting busy. Of course, they are not allowing things to get out of hand, rather, but still, Nihil, of course, the man of the final kill cam. Being added to this team, question being, is he the permanent fill-in for the hype unit, or is it just kind of a thing where they're working out players as time goes along? It seems that that is the case. I believe the um, supposedly uh, fourth for the hype unit roster is supposed to be Lyric, um, but I believe in the last few 2K tournaments, uh, with, I believe they've been playing with a, uh, what was it? I think they played with Foncho and a guy named Tish. So uh, curious to see how it goes for three of the four players. Of course, a very solid group is Glory, Profizi, and Beezy. And then you got like Nihil, who is currently a free agent, not on any team, not leaving a specific roster to join alongside this group. Could definitely compliment them well. And so far in the search for Stroa, he seems to be doing well, but it comes down to the first bloods. As he's currently sitting at 3-1, and one, along with Profizi. Man rocking the PPSH, and Profizi, of course, player for a few different teams. Of course, most notably Panda Gaming, back in Infinite Warfare. Along with, uh, you know, a few different guys like Prophet, Pemby. Fastball, solid group that team was. I think him and Fastball were definitely uh, very high performers. One of the uh, guys to really kind of utilize the ground pound movement back in IW was Profizi. It was just overall a very, uh, very solid group. So, looking on. Profizi 4-1. and one. Nihil also 4-1. and one. <laughs> Glory and Beezy yet to find kills, but it's still equaling up to rounds as... It will be, we'll be the man, Profizi, grabbing the bomb. Goes for the quick dash. Actually not tossing any smokes, it looks like, into uh, the A site. So meaning that the utility, as far as nades, are still in the back pocket. As you can see, Profizi still has the sticky with him, a.k.a. the uh, N74ST. Not going to remember that grenade, I think, throughout the rest of the title, just to be fair. Not going to remember N N74, uh, I think. I'm just going to call it sticky for now. But still, looking on, it looks like Savant staring at uh, the coal. Maybe, maybe taking a look at what he's going to get for Christmas. Who knows? Actually shoots his teammate. That's why he's on the naughty list. That's why he's getting Cole. Rather unfortunate there for Savant. Him and uh, Standy. Called him Standby earlier. Apologies for that. Sorry about that, Standy. I think Standby would actually be a really cool name. I'm not going to lie. I think that'd be pretty sick. Uh, but regardless, back to back to back now. Rounds for the side of not getting busy. As Nihil, first bloods. Round ending kills. It doesn't matter. He gets the most important ones. And is maybe definitely proving to these other three players that maybe he's a solid potential fourth, the one that they've been wanting, the one that they've been kind of seeking out. Haven't had the uh, results that they've been wanting for the hype unit. Uh, I think it's fair to say in the last few 2Ks, I believe they placed top 64 in the one that took place uh, this past weekend. And the one prior to that, they placed top 32. And when it comes down to a, um, you know, names like Glory, names especially like Profizi and Beezy, uh, top 32 placements are definitely not something that you would prefer, especially top 64 at that. But uh, as many know about World War II, 
Surprising placings, surprise placements rather, have been a uh, common commonality. I think it's fair to say. Team like Phase Clan not playing up to par. Team Caliber, who's placed top four in every single 2K. Doubt that was expected from many people, if anyone at all. Maybe even the TK players surprised by that themselves. But still, World War II, it's a learning game. People still learning to uh, work out certain strategies and whatnot. As we just see one come into play, the bait and switch here for the side of Sprite Zero. As they're looking to try and get the bomb down, maybe try to get a sponsorship in the uh, in the meantime. As Nihil does a great job as kind of taking those shots and has to be aware of his left side. Most likely not going to check this one, but just happens to get the good timing. But regardless, Standy is there. Goes for the ladder climb. He's able to find one. And in succession, despite having good control over this site, shutting down Nihil in the trade, it will be the set of Sprite Zero. Standy, last one alive. One versus two. Bomb is not planted. And he's got two players, like I said, left to try and face off against. This is not going to be a round that goes his way. And does find one on BZ. Unfortunately for Glory, he is long out of harm's way. We'll escape with this particular round. As to be expected, right? I, mean, I think it's fair to say, kind of coming into this matchup, we're definitely expecting, uh, you know, three-fourths of the hype unit roster to definitely kind of be performing up to the, you know, highest of levels. Definitely one of the more strong teams when it comes down to this tournament for tonight. And uh, everyone working on their search and destroy game, trying to win some extra cash as well. Can't hate on it. Profizi, he's got full streaks. He's feeling good. Maybe a glide bomb. Wouldn't be a bad idea to call this one out. Call this one in, rather, on the uh, B site. And uh, kind of being in this particular area, maybe waits for a teammate or calls in himself to kind of hold into that central area because that's where the players are going to be funneling into. And now as he actually stays up, he actually finds both of them. I was going to say, if he doesn't find those kills, he at least makes them weak and they run right into his crosshair as he'd come out of that streak usage. So with that, two versus four. Bomb is down. Standy and Kizzle. What can you do? Jumps in the box. Not a smart move, especially when someone's using that bomb head glitch. But still looking on. Standy finding two, though, on a four spree at the moment. And does have a Molotov in his back pocket. At least could play for streaks. Wouldn't be a bad call. Also shuts down BZ as well. One versus one challenges. They've been happening at a rapid rate. I was going to say, if he goes for the Sneak Diffuse, it definitely would have been possible, but happened to go for the rush on Nihil, and a huge one versus four clutch. Did he get it, though? Did Standy get that? Oh my god, this is going to come down to the wire. Did Standy get the one versus four? No, he actually hops off of it. He doesn't get it in time. A near one versus four clutch for this man. And literally, I want to say, what was that? Maybe two tenths of a second off of getting the Diffuse, and he also stops mid-sprint to go for it. I need to watch the replay of that and see if that was actually possible. What an insane play, but one that doesn't equal up to a round. You see him seven and three. Literally doubling kills. Well, as of course that kill just comes in there from Savant, both of those. It changes things up, but after that round, Standy. Insane stuff from him, but it doesn't work out to a round victory. That's the unfortunate thing. If he had at least one teammate stay up through that entire thing, it could have worked out. It should have worked out. At least Danny says, I'll get this kill as well. Adding more, shutting down BZ. But you've got to imagine at this point, definitely not looking likely that the uh, round, let alone the series, let alone the map. I would say the map, probably not the series. It's still kind of undecided at this point. Of course, uh, Gibraltar could play out differently. That's for sure. I think it's fair to say. Uh, when it comes down to Gibraltar, USS Texas, definitely kind of... Uh, I want to say throwaway round or throwaway game modes, but kind of more 50-50, kind of playing the lanes as it will be Profizi who does finally pull out the streak, calling in the fighter pilot. As you've got to keep in mind, he actually uses the glide bomb in the prior round, but one versus four nearly came in. Of course, it does go his team's way, which is all that matters. However, though, what could have been. As it is currently a four versus three. Profizi with that bomb. Kind of being the uh, main player. This is what Profizi's kind of overall mentality as a player is to do. Kind of being the front line. He could do the objective work. As we'll see him do one there onto Contrude. And one thing for players who play in Profizi's roles is that they have to have a good knowledge of the game. They have to do a lot of grinding to kind of figure out where those spots are going to be. As Kizzle will get dropped. 
and will be finished off there as this one will go six rounds to two in favor of the side of not getting busy. Despite a uh, fantastic performance coming in there from Standy, eight and four, near one versus four clutch. Fountain all four kills, but just couldn't get the defuse. But getting back to talking about Profizi, when it comes into a player who kind of plays that role, the aggressive SMG, kind of being the front line, the entry fragger, essentially when it comes down to uh, World War II, you have to have a lot, of, a lot of game knowledge, kind of grinding out this game, realizing where the spots are going to be, especially when it comes down to rocking that objective, how special and how important that role could be. But of course, it will be a gainer one in the books for the side of not getting busy as they win this one in just eight rounds of play. Will Gibraltar play out differently? Can Stanley and the co, the, the group rather, from Sprite Zero make the comeback? We'll find that out when we come back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Call of Duty World War II 4v4 Search and Destroy for November 28th. We're currently in our matchup taking place between Sprite Zero and Not Getting Busy. The teams are interesting. Match number one was also very interesting, despite it only going to eight rounds. We saw near one versus four clutch from the man that you're currently looking at now. Standy got all four kills, but was about maybe two tenths of a second away from getting the defuse. An insane uh, sequence of a few rounds, but overall it was the dominance, which was expected on London Docks for the set of not getting busy. Of course, players most notably known, BZ, Profeezy, you got Glory, and you got the man Nihil, of course. Uh, three Force, officially known as the hype unit, all except for Nihil. Has uh, something to kind of talk about uh, with the uh, not getting busy lineup, aka uh, three fourths of the hype unit team, is that a lot of these guys have actually played in the past with one another, which I'm uh, personally uh, a big fan of when it comes down to like kind of top, uh, you know, semi pro players or kind of top, um, or I would say like higher level, but not necessarily like the highest level of pros. So I, mean, I, I kind of say like top semi pro players uh, is when they kind of stick together, as you're going to see Nihil combined for the first blood on the opposite end. It was BZ who dropped. And Niall still looking on here. Played very well when it came down to map number one. Along with Profizi, who I believe finished off 9-2. Nine 9-2. And nine and, I believe 9-2. and two. As the round will get equaled out. But like I was saying, I'm a big fan of whenever players, uh, top semi-pro players, kind of like to stick together. Which is what we're kind of seeing from the three, or the kind of trio. For not getting busy, Glory, BZ, Profizi all playing... Uh, I believe for actually Era Eternity, uh, one of the Era teams back in IW. Um, I believe toward the beginning of the game, this roster, three fours were known under, uh, was it Project Evil, I believe? There was some drama with BZ being dropped, picking up TCM, and then BZ coming back to the team. They ended up leaving that organization. They've had a few issues when it comes down to, to orgs, but they've uh, kind of stood the test of time. And uh, very excited to see this group. Maybe if they can find a solid fourth, which who knows, could be Nihil. What they can do when it comes into World War II, despite not having the... Uh, Best of performances so far in the online 2K tournaments. This is a group who, over time, can definitely make some noise for themselves. Can definitely uh, make something happen. You know, of course, as far as this overall lineup is considered, Profizi, BZ, and uh, Glory, aka Glorios, known during the Jetpack era mostly. And the BZ, I believe, yes, does happen to just get that bomb down. And uh, unfortunately for Pofizi, he does have a great line sight to hold here in comms building. I was going to say, probably doesn't have a bar or an AR, an AR in his back pocket. But thankfully does. Is able to find one. One for the quick rush and not a bait and switch. The push coming in from Standy. The aggressiveness from Profizi will unfortunately equal out to a gunfight that will not go his way. And they're going to be giving this defuse over to Savant. As he will be able to earn... That first score streak will have the Molotov heading in here toward round number four, along with a one round advantage. So big things. If you're on the side of Sprite Zero, of, of course, losing map number one in a uh, you know rather unfortunate circumstance, of course, should have had three rounds, only ended up winning two. And not wanting to get eliminated when it, came, when it comes down to the early rounds here of tonight's tournament. But everyone trying to learn their search and destroy. What are the strategies? How are things working out? And it seems that the uh, strategies have kind of gone over toward the side as we see Savant actually currently with the FG42. It's the FG42 meta for the moment. Gun can definitely do some damage, that's for sure. SMGs kind of being more preferred as time go goes on is answering the call. Is Profizi spawning one out there with the PPSH. Up close fight, and that's just a solid win there from Profizi. And that's, that's the difference, really. 
This is the difference between players who coming from past titles, kind of known in the competitive scene, kind of playing for countless hours, scrimming. Gunfights like that definitely make a big, big difference. And you can kind of see them all the time. That's just one of the specific moments that we get to witness there from the great SMG play there from Prophesia. I'm very excited to see how this guy plays when it comes to World War II. One of my favorite players to watch throughout uh, most of Infinite Warfare, of course, most notably known uh, throughout the uh, final jetpack Call of Duty. But uh, I believe I've actually started casting over him since I want to say it was uh, AW, actually. Played with uh, guys like GodRx. I want to say that was actually on, um, was it Vanquish? I believe it was uh, Team Vanquish, actually. One of my favorite uh, AM teams back in the day. So I've kind of been following Prophesia's career for a while, and I'm very excited to see what he can do when it comes down to uh, being on the ground. Of course, him and BZ. BZ, very well-known player when it came down to uh, last two titles. Of course, Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare, most notably known on uh, Lethal Gaming. Made some uh, interesting champs runs. And is a very, very solid AR player. Curious to see what this guy can do as well. Very active on the Reddit. Likes to give some roster rumors away at times. Maybe he could be giving away that he's playing with Dihill. Who knows? Maybe there'll be a roster post on the uh, competitive Reddit once this, once this tournament is through, once it's done. But uh, kind of unfortunate position if you are in Profezi's current to line site, most likely waving the white flag is uh, just rounding the corner, dropping. And when it comes down to Gibraltar, of course, definitely heavily favoring, for the most part, the defensive side. As actually you're going to see Standy there with the uh, Duck Soup PPSH variant. Uh, variants have definitely been in the uh, hot topic for the uh, competitive scene at the moment, whether or not they should be banned. Feel free to obviously leave your opinion in the chat. Who knows? Or maybe even in this uh, YouTube video, which will be Later, upload it to our YouTube channel, youtube.com, UMG events. Make sure to look it up for past VODs, including ones from this tournament. Of course, I believe we just uploaded the uh, $10,000 Memorial Tournament, which, of course, we do have a returning group. I'm not sure if the, is it the uh, producer, is it the entire team who won the 10K tournament? Is that the uh, group who's playing tonight's one as well? It might be at least a few players. I think it's Simp and Turnip, maybe Selium. Not sure if Illy is on that team, but still kind of speaking of that group there in, the, there in uh, tonight's tournament, as per usual. So very excited to see this team play. And uh, what should be a matchup, most likely, between the not getting busy and the uh, EXO season group. Of course, uh, could potentially not be the... Could potentially could not be the case, though. But I believe it is the, uh, the full group uh, who did win that uh, 10K Memorial Tournament, which will be... Uh, in tonight's tournament, of course, going to hop on board with them when it comes down to their future matches or future series, as uh, they should be making their way through uh, semis, maybe even into finals as well. I'd like to expect that that would most likely be the case. However, I'm looking forward. Apologies, I know I was kind of getting off track with talking about variants and whatnot. But uh, Gibraltar, definitely hav heavily favoring the defensive team throughout most of the map. As far as how it's played, can be extremely difficult to make your way onto that B-bomb, so I kind of have to rely on the defensive team to not be pushing up as far as normal and when you try to go over toward a on a turret it can really be a, a no man's land essentially and the offensive team also has to constantly constantly really be worried about that pinch that can actually come in from this exact position here through cave if they're not fully aware of that there's usually someone who's sitting inside a comms building who can easily rotate forward back through a uh, middle stairs so definitely defensive team has the advantage and if you can win some offensive rounds that's Honestly, huge. And being the case right now, it is five to two. Will we see an exact score line from map number one? However, will it be reversed? Of course, it was six to two in map one for not getting busy. And Standy and Co. still playing incredibly strong right now. Him and Savant leading as far as kills are considered for their team, as well as in the lobby in total. As Profizi, last up, PPSH in hand. And four enemies left to face him as he's going to drop. So back-to-back -back maps bolt in out here at eight rounds. However, going different ways. And one that I was personally not expecting to be the case. Granted, I think when it comes down to Gibraltar, it's definitely a higher possibility to see a not expected result. But uh, one that is nonetheless interesting. So with that, it will be a map three. That's actually going to be coming up between both of these teams. That one will be on St. Marie Dumont. 
And of course, we do have to keep in mind here the final scorecard, Standy, still playing incredibly strong despite that one versus four clutch that he nearly had in that first map. Definitely got to be looking at when it comes down to map number three. So will it be the side of Sprite Zero who's able to bring this one back? Or will we see not getting busy? Can they respond here in map number three after their strong map number one performance? How will things play off? We'll figure that out when we come back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, of course, to the Club of World War II 4v4 Search and Destroy 4. November 28th, it's currently myself, Lando, here live in the UMG studio doing the casting for you guys in this current semi-final matchup between the side of Sprite Zero and not getting busy. Of course, uh, no sponsors when it comes down to this particular team. However, that'd be kind of cool. Not the case currently, but definitely making a name for themselves. Contrude, Standy, Savant, and Kizzle destroyed when it came down to the last map on Gibraltar, winning that one at six rounds to two. After actually experiencing the exact same fates in the game before, but they end up losing the same result. That one, however, was on London Docks. St. Marie Dumont going to play fairly similar, similar. as Stanley gets a nice snipe there. Nearly finds one onto Profizi, as this man has been playing incredibly strong despite the loss in map one and the dominance in map two. Definitely been playing incredibly strong as he finds, I believe that was two in the round there. Uh, but uh, when it comes down to this particular map, you're going to see pretty heavy focus when it comes down to Radio Tower bomb site. That's going to be one where you're going to see quite a few teams just kind of swarm to, kind of tossing out those Molotovs, the um, the uh, Lethals Tacticals. Those ones are going to be tossed over as we're going to head to our Sky Cam and kind of witness where these are going to be going to. You're going to see quite a few Airborns, of course, to kind of use that speed ability. And you're going to see the offensive team try to get in here as quick as possible. These early fights are absolutely huge. As it will be a advantage, obviously, for the side of not getting busy. As it will be Standy, last alive yet again. One versus two now. As he does pick off BZ. I believe it was a headshot there in the top red, a.k.a. Restaurant. And at least in the situation that he's in. Granted, he does not have the bomb, but at least has time to make something happen. Is uh, Where's that bomb actually placed right now? Looks like uh, it's just going to be right... Near that bomb site, so Orioles, aka Glory, watching over it right now. Not having the uh, best of results, of course, does get greeted by the FG42 shots on the bomb. Decides to go for a quick little flank, and we'll see if this works out for him. Looks like both players kind of watching their backs, one through restaurant, one hopping on the bomb. And if he does use correct line sight, if he can pick off one, he should be able to at least maybe time where one. Other player could be at, and Profizi literally can just jump peek this. Tosses at the Molotov just for security, but does not take out Standy though. Standy, quite literally, on fire. He needs to go for the plant, and Profizi just needs to go for the challenge. Firing some extra shots, but no Standy. He doesn't care, but he's not going to have enough time to plant the bomb down. What an interesting round that we just witnessed. I don't believe Standy hopped off the bomb when Profizi shot those extra shots, but yet again, another scenario. Where Standy is typing in those digits and just can't get it done. A near defuse <laughs> in map number one in a one versus four scenario in a one on one in that particular spot doesn't have time. No, doesn't have enough time for the plant. And props to Profizi for playing that one out. Granite doesn't really need to use the Molotov as far as like his current positioning. I mean, Granite, it's obviously a smart decision to use it, but uh, as far as how the round would have gone. I don't know. Interesting round to say the least, but one that does go the way of not getting busy, so you can't really take anything away from them, as it will be yet again another solid push here when it comes down to this particular site. As a nice pickup there from Profizi, but no, Savant hops over the shots, actually rocking the bar, and a great line sight being used from BZ, picks off one, unfortunately is not able to escape there out of City Hall, as Standy, who other than this man, Finally, we'll be able to grab a defuse here. Some success on that bomb site. Definitely needing it. He's been getting the kills. But just has been difficult getting the rounds. But with that, Standy currently sitting at 5 and 1. Sat at 8 and 2 in map number 2. Definitely the player to be focusing on when it comes into Sprite Zero. In the Bane, really. If you are for not getting busy, but uh, keeping that in mind, opposite site, Contrude finds a huge first kill onto Profizi despite not having 
a full team support when it comes down to the site. So if you are on the side of Sprite Zero, you do have Standy, who's on the flank. And they also find one on Nihil. Granted, that one doesn't have to go their way, and they will pick off Glory. That is a huge first blood that comes in, because if they don't find that, the things are kind of equaled out, and it's a, it's a kind of a uh, four versus three fight that we're going to see on that bomb. But thankfully, two fights end up going their way. So, Stanley kind of being in this position, it's a very risky play to make happen. And granted, he does find one on the flank, so it kind of works out. Savant might have been there. But still, very well played out round if you are in Sprite Zero's position. And honestly, a very smart play to kind of send him being Standy toward that opposite site. Because in playing kind of more passively, not getting on that bomb site, he actually plays for streaks. And shuts down, like I said, glory from the flank. So, a perfectly executed round if you are... In that particular standpoint, Profizi making his way toward this bomb yet again. But here come the streaks. Can he get this one down in time is the question. Does. However, Stanley is there with the streaks. The glide bomb will pick him off. Equal things out at a three on three, but not for much longer. Kills starting to happen. Two versus two now. Beasy coming from one side. And glory from above. Coming in here through restaurant. Beasy playing passive. Tosses out the stun on Savant, but no! Isn't able to stay alive. Savant somehow finds that kill on Beasy. He knows... He knows an interesting line sight, line sight, excuse me, when it comes down to this particular point of view in City Hall. And makes it work. Beautiful play there. Did it in just a round prior. Is able to equal it around when it comes down to this particular situation. Just overall great knowledge there from BZ. And that's just when it comes down to grinding this game. Just knowing kind of bomb placement when it comes down to Profizi who gets that one down early. Smart play there. Coming in there from good old BZ. Because that will be three rounds to two now. In favor of not getting busy. A lot of Z's in this game. Profizi, BZ, not getting busy. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's on purpose. Who knows? Probably is. I don't know. I don't know where teams gonna get their uh, their team names from. They're very unique to say the least. But uh, frags going back and forth, dropping one on either side as we're even down here at a three on three early in this round number six. Nihil being patient to hop around this bomb site and will get taken out there from the Molotov. And in back to back situations, we see a frag equal up for the first kill for both teams. We also see a Molotov get found here for both teams as well. Beasy, thankfully, to finding. Uh, that wall bang in the prior round has earned, and did earn that Molotov, and is able to find the second player in this round. Trying to make things easier here for not getting busy. This would be a huge round for them to take. A two round advantage, especially when it comes down to map number three. Glory ends up falling, and now it's left up to him as he will drop. So Molotov gets used in that round. Not a huge loss, but one that's definitely coming into play as Savant Helping in both of those exchanges. It really is just a rush in overall knowledge when it comes to frags. If you are on St. Marie Dumont, kind of hopping in that radio uh, radio tower bomb site over on B, as it will be the boys from not getting busy. We're going to be rushing on this site yet again, most likely. As we'll see how the frags will pan out. We'll see if there are any, any interesting strategies that kind of come through. It looks like double nades. Molly ends up taking out Glory. As I believe Glory was most likely rocking either an airborne or a. Uh... I was say, I thought it might have been rocking an airborne division class. Maybe even armored as well, but regardless, needs coming through. As we'll be not getting busy, who ha currently has two players down. Man disadvantage at the moment for Nihil and Beezy. Gonna need to make something happen. It wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. For them typically to make their way over toward this A side, but it's something that's just so difficult because they don't have any knowledge when it comes down to being inside a restaurant. And there is an easy point of view that you can actually watch where Nihil's going to be focusing a lot of attention toward is that window. And not having a line set when it comes down to that particular one makes things incredibly awkward. Of course, trying to spot out Kizzle. And if you're in Kizzle's position, like, honestly, just all you need to do is just stay alive. Make sure that you have... A decent line sight. Don't make. Right, kind of just make sure you kind of play your life in that particular scenario. As Nihil just somehow is able to pick off Savant in that particular position. So now Kizzle starts to feel a little bit of the pressure. And the team shot's coming forward. Kizzle's able to stay alive. That's a huge play for him. However, the bomb's going down. And I believe they do have enough time for this. Player number five, Contru, though. Coming from the side as he'll pick up both of them. 
Huge two-piece. Coming in here from Contrude. Hops on one. Picks off Nihil. And will spot BZ just toward the side. And that's a huge play for Kizzle to stay alive inside a top restaurant. Why? Because he's able to constantly be aware and constantly have that vision onto that site. As the reason why that round goes their way, of course, is to Kizzle's play. But prior to that were the early nades that came on this B-bomb site that really are the entire story for the reason why we're seeing rounds, for the most part, go the way of Sprite Zero. Early fights happening. I think it's only fair that we do hop in the above camera just to make sure we catch absolutely every single play. But uh, Kizzle doing some damage yet again. That one going to be on Nihil. Back-to-back -back rounds. Taking him out. BZ and Glory now. Left to try and defend as Glory on the flank at the moment. They could put a very nice pinch potentially here. But Glory has to stay alive. There's too many angles to check on that backside flank. Just very difficult position to be in. And if you're, and also if you're in Glory's position, it's almost like you just kind of have to uh, make the risky play and not check every single particular angle. You just kind of have to make the full rush and just hope that no one's there. But uh, realize that he is a man down, especially being. And two versus three. Things are never never easy, rather. As it will be Standy, who does find the snipe. Who else than this man? What's Standy right now? What's he, what's he, how's he playing right now? Let me see. Standy is 11-3. and three. I think it's only fair that we do hop on board with this man. Standy has literally been going off in every single map of this series. Has the fighter pilot heading into this round number nine. And making a huge impact when it comes down to the overall aspect of this game. One that was not expected to go their way, I think it's fair to say. Shutting down one. That's 12 and 3. And Profizi making his way toward this bomb site. Do they have any streaks? Anything to work with? They do not. BZ ends up falling. Profizi immediately hops off the bomb plant. Thankfully, it is a two versus two. And Nihil does have somewhat of a presence when it comes to the top restaurant. And it's a Profizi firing away those shots. Nihil has to be super careful as to where his positioning is going to be. Because if Profizi ends, or excuse me, if he ends up dropping this position, Profizi is almost dead in the water. It happens to turn around at the worst time possible. But here comes the fire pilot. That's a distraction. Will come through though. Contrude ends up dropping. And Stanley feeling the pressure. Has to make the rush forward. Nihil doing a great job and getting some fantastic timing. When it came down to top restaurant, as we'll see this one at least, see another round. Back and forth play. This one definitely could see a round 11. We could see overtime. But we're going to need to see a huge round come out here from the side of not getting busy. And this group definitely has that capability. This is a team who has been in a few scenarios when it comes down to land. They've been down before. But can they rally? Is the question. Tossing nades over. Let's see if that one will land for Profizi. Nades being exchanged back and forth. Molotov as well. However, it's not the greatest of placement. As you can see, they could definitely make it around. Nihil should be dead in the water, but just happens to stay alive. Nihil definitely feeling the presence of that frag. Bomb immediately goes down. No kills being traded as of yet. And if you are for the side of not getting busy, it's going to be difficult to try and retake this. As Contru shuts down Profizi, glory. Is thankfully able to make this one a three versus three. Finding someone off to the side. You see player number six, Standy, watching on the flank. Shuts down Glory, potentially, but no, still up. A pinch is in play, but they need to have the shots. BZ and Glory taking shots from every which angle. And BZ now just toward the side. One versus two. He's going to drop. The Molotov comes forward. And it will be a victory here. In the books is St. Marie Dumont for map number three. Go the way of Sprite Zero. Props. Major props to those guys, man. As to kind of explain the entire series, rather. London Docks, of course, was a 6-2 victory for not getting busy, playing incredibly strong. Uh, kind of thinking when it comes down to Gibraltar. Could see a different result. We could definitely see uh, you know, the guys in Sprite Zero play a little bit stronger. I was kind of talking about Standy, of course, had the near one versus four um, kind of overall round victory. Of course, does find all four kills, but can't find the defuse. I mean... We obviously, like I said, C. Gibraltar from map two. Totally uh, flip-flop overall result. Another 62, this time in favor of Sprite Zero, which forces us now to the map three. 
That one, of course, on St. Marie Dumont, where we see Sprite Zero play incredibly strong. Yet again, another solid performance from Stanley. Finishes off 12 and 5. This guy was a one-man wrecking crew when it came down to this particular series. I've got to be watching out for this guy when it comes down to finals. because. With my